There's one. Shh, don't scare it. It's okay. I'm not going to scare it. I got it. Growing up, my best friend and I would spend a few weekends in the summers going to her cabin in West Virginia. We loved running through the woods, leaves crunching beneath our feet as we raced to get to the nearby lake. Once at the lake, we would swim, make sandcastles, and play pretend, but our favorite thing to do was catch newts. We would sit as still as we could in the shallow water and watch them swim through a forest of seagrass. Then, when one got close enough, we would scoop it up, or try to at least. Most of the time, they were much faster than us, so we would sit still again and wait for them to come back. When we did catch them, it was so gratifying. We would ooh at their yellow bellies, awe at their green backs, and admire all their bright red spots. One summer, I brought some home with me and nearly gave my mother a heart attack when she saw them. What are those? she exclaimed. They're newts, I told her. And I looked in one of our wildlife identification books to find out that they were the eastern red spotted variety. Her question was still valid, though. What even are newts? Are they lizards? Tadpoles? Weird fish with legs? Not exactly. Newts are salamanders, an order of amphibians which retains their tails in adulthood. Like all amphibians, they split their time between land and water, but they have some incredible traits that are unique to their group. Salamanders live all over the world and can be as small as a matchstick or up to almost six feet long. Some salamanders have real-life superpowers. One species, the axolotl, can regenerate not just limbs, but also ovaries, lung tissue, and even parts of the brain and spinal cord. Axolotls are used in a lot of biological research due to this ability, but are also commonly held as pets. Their regenerative abilities are shared by many other salamander species, too. Another cool adaptation of salamanders is how they breathe. For that, there are a few different strategies. All salamanders hatch from eggs, but this is where the similarities end. Some have gills that they keep for their entire lives. Some have gills that they trade in for lungs in adulthood. Some, called lungless salamanders, don't have lungs or gills as adults. Instead, they breathe directly through their skin. Imagine if you never had to take another breath and instead you could just absorb all the oxygen you needed through your own skin. That would be pretty incredible. Unfortunately, salamanders have a kryptonite. Their incredible, sometimes breathing skin is extremely sensitive. If any salamander's skin gets too dry or too hot, it could die. Chemical pollutants can be absorbed through their skin, causing all kinds of health problems, and in some cases, death. Habitat destruction through land use change and chemical pollution are the main threats to salamanders worldwide. When we cut down forests, fill in ponds, and divert streams, we destroy the shady, moist environments that salamanders call home. Or, even if we don't physically destroy them, we poison them when our fertilizers, pesticides, heavy metals, and road de-icers make their way into soils and waters. As the San Diego Zoo puts it, people are salamanders' worst enemy. So, how can we help? In Vermont, some salamander species migrate every year from upland wintering sites to lowland vernal pools to lay their eggs. Vernal pools are small ponds that only form during the spring from snowmelt and are at least partially dry in the summer. They are essential to salamander and other amphibian breeding, but getting to them often means crossing many roads, making the migration a dangerous journey. If you want to help salamanders safely reach their destination, you can volunteer with the North Branch Nature Center's Amphibian Road Crossing Program, or ARC, to physically help salamanders cross the road, taking scientific data in the process. Just be careful not to touch them unless it's necessary, since the oils and lotions on human hands can harm salamanders' sensitive skin. 
If you aren't interested in something quite so hands-on, you can contribute to the Vermont Vernal Pool Monitoring Project from the Vermont Center for Eco Studies. Finally, if citizen science just really isn't your thing, you can advocate for conservation efforts such as protecting vernal pools, creating amphibian migration corridors, or salamander tunnels, which allow safe passage under roads. Or simply advocate for reducing the amount of chemicals that get into the environment. Salamanders are incredible animals, and we should do what we can to help them out. There are still so many undiscovered species, it would be shameful if they went extinct before we even had a chance to appreciate them. My generation shouldn't be the last one with the opportunity to experience the thrills of catching salamanders.